Well, to get Aristotle, all you gotta do is flip Plato on his head. Like, like I told you, that's what a good disciple is supposed to do. Challenge their teacher. And so Aristotle, even though he greatly respected Plato, he's like, um, so, so what you're telling us, Plato, is every single dog in the world, we know it's a dog because there's some doghood concept in the cosmos, this abstract, eternal concept of a dog being. And Aristotle says, no, you have to start down here with the physical material worlds, with actual individual dogs. So Aristotle says, you start with things like trees, people, and coffee mugs, and by comparing a lot of different trees, I can find what is that universal that we call tree. I don't start with the universal like Plato, and then when I see something that lines up to it, I say, oh, that's a tree. We start with physical trees, and then we look at what separates them from, say, a bush, or a flower, or a person. And then we use reason to take things from the material world, and we think our way up to, from individuals, to universals. So Aristotle's not opposed to this idea of universals. He's just saying they follow the particular. Where Plato says, no, the universal comes first, and then it disseminates into the particulars. Fascinating. So back to the coffee mug analogy. For example, he would start, I like to call him a materialist because of this, he would start with the material physical world. So there's no cosmic concept of coffee mug. Maybe one day you're out in the fields and there's some gourd growing, and, but it's been broken or bitten into and it's dried out and it had rained overnight. And here's this gourd, this broken gourd, and it's filled with rainwater. And using human reason, you're thinking, oh, wow, we could like actually intentionally grow gourds, cut them in half, and use them for like cut, cups or mugs. So he's taking what's physically there, then using human reason to create, build on, name, and evaluate. And so he starts with material cause, So in this case, the material cause here would be clay, or in this case, metal. We're starting kind of with the ancient Greeks with these building blocks, these material substances. But then you have to think of what is it that's taking that material and turning it into these beverage containers? And you know that would be like the human engineer or artist engineer in this case, artist in that case, right? And so, say you have a block of marble. The material cause is the marble. The artist is the one who is chiseling or working at the marble to release what's inside. The formal cause might be a statue. So somewhere inside here he sees some form that he wants to bring out. And then the final cause, it might be like an offering or memorial. Something to put on a temple or on a, on a grave site. And so he's seeing it in these terms. You start with the physical, you bring an agent to interact with the physical material, you have a formal cause in mind, and then a final end to which things go. And so this is very helpful with Aristotle, I believe, is he makes a distinction between actuality and potentiality. So for example, an acorn has the potential to become a great oak tree. 
An acorn is not an oak tree, but it has the potentiality to become one. Okay. A child is not a man, but it has the potential to grow up, become an adult, and then produce its own children. And so that would be like, what is the end goal of an acorn? Now, I would assume it's to become a tree to produce more acorns. A human to grow up, become an adult, replicate into the future. That would be an actualized human in this example. So Aristotle, if he's evaluating these two mugs instead of Plato, he's going to look at form and function. He's going to say, well, this looks like a beverage container. It feels like a beverage container. It smells, it tastes like a beverage container. It's functioning as a beverage container. Ipso facto, it must be a beverage container. But he's making that judgment on what it does and how it functions, not about some abstract, universal, eternal idea. So weird. Two guys, teacher, student, and they're just like opposite sides of the coin. But even though on the surface it looks like they're saying completely opposite things, it's the same pattern. Do you see that? One simply starting from, Aristotle starting from the physical working his way to the metaphysical, and Plato is starting with the ideal or metaphysical and working his way down to the physical. And so I personally believe they're really just showing us two sides of the same coin, and they have a different emphasis on where it goes. But depending where your emphasis is on the physical material or on the ideal, you could see how that could change everything. My personal theory, when you look at Western civilization, when you have a balance in culture between the idealism of Plato and the pragmatic realism of Aristotle, you just have golden ages of art, architecture, literature, all medicine, all these sorts of things, because you have these ideals to drive you, these visions, but you also have the practicality to produce it to create the arch, to make the dome, to make the aqueducts, to make you know these sorts of physical, practical things. It's not just that con concept. Now, if it just becomes conceptual, you can end into this like mystical, where people are sitting staring at the ends of their noses because they're just living in their heads. Because why come out into all this brokenness when the perfection is in here, right, inside? Or if you're only materialistically minded, it becomes kind of base and trite and shallow when there's nothing deep or transcendent to go with your physical productions. But we see this again in like the late Middle Ages. It's called the High Gothic period. That's my favorite period of art architecture. It's just, but it's where Plato and Aristotle have once again kind of come together. And then materialism, Aristotle's view kind of took over in the modern era with modern science, all that sort of stuff. But I believe we are living in a time where there's been like a platonic, idealistic revival. And I think you're seeing a lot of that creativity and stuff coming from that blend of the pragmatism with the idealism. All right, any other questions, comments, thoughts? <laughs>